The plight of the Palestinian people in Gaza is very, very real. Uh, in case you don't know, more, most recently some Palestinians have suffered terrifying losses in a beach tennis tournament in Gaza. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is this is what is going on six months after October 7th. Uh, Palestinians are enjoying uh, the beautiful beaches of Gaza, enjoying, uh, you know, markets full of, of uh, any type of food that you can dream of while the hostages are still being held if uh, they are still alive uh daniel so so we have some context do you want to let's let's start with that uh the clip from the the beach in dear el bala uh sure i'll just need a second so i will welcome people no, no, while we wait for the to the uh, daily objective day 195 of the war in israel uh this is one of the clips from uh the beach And again, just for for context, uh, you know, we can we can play it while we talk about it. Oh, is, can anybody hear it? Because I can't. Anyway, uh, I just silence it. Um, yeah, just for context, uh, you know, this is this is an area of Gaza that Israel hasn't uh, hasn't operated in yet. This is again over six months after October seven. These are the people who. Um, many of whom participated in the October 7th massacre. Uh, many others celebrated in the streets. Nobody uh, did anything to to try to stop or to, um, uh, you know, try to help Israel uh, find the location of the hostages, help Israel fight against Hamas. These kinds of scenes are scenes of Israel's defeat. Uh, and, you know, I know many of our viewers won't, won't like hearing this, but this is this is a uh, this is a fact of where we are with this with this conflict. Israel from day one has uh, attempted to minimize civilian casualties, as we can see here very successfully, uh, has attempted not to not to harm the population in Gaza that supported October 7th in any way. Uh, possible, and this is this is the result: a uh, a nation that is still very much, you know, uh, united and ready for the moment when uh, it is time for them to fight back. Daniel. Yeah. So just for context, uh, and I might butcher the name, but this is the town of Deir Al Bala, which uh, you know, similar to Rafa. Uh, IDF hasn't operated in those cities yet, and I actually, uh, I'm I'm just laughing because uh, in my notes I had a I had a note from the article uh, because apparently some of the displaced people came to this town from Rafa, uh, and in the article it also said Rafa, which Israel threatens it will enter enter soon, and I have a note of lol next to it since uh yeah any day now uh idf will finally enter rafa uh yeah but uh, you, you know the fact uh how you talked about you know this is the sign of defeat i mean yeah the whole idea that uh you know we as we saw in the video you know these people are enjoying their time on beaches these people i mean it's hard to say for example but many of the palestinians uh, participated in the October 7 attacks, both the attacks, the kidnappings, and then celebrated on the streets. I mean, imagine if those same people are here now on beach, just enjoying their time six months into the war. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't even feel like they're at war because uh, IDF still hasn't entered some cities. And uh, before the show, I looked up the map of uh, basically like a detailed map of where uh, IDF operates, uh, where are the humanitarian zones and all that. And most of the map, or maybe like half the map is still empty. IDF doesn't operate there. I mean, it, it's crazy. And, you know, on the same map, I could see uh, the the evacuation zone in the north uh, next to Lebanon, because many people, Israelis are currently displaced or basically evacuated from the uh, around the border of Lebanon because 
again, Israel is not doing anything about Hezbollah. Uh, so yeah, you know, six months into the war and we still have to see like, how is this conflict going to end? I mean, then I have uh, some more points about what should be done, uh, but let me go back to you, Ransi. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I have something to say about the Rafa operation as well, but uh, Jeanette says in the chat, just watch the UN conference, and when the Israeli spokesman was speaking, the Palestinian smoke spokesman was smirking. Uh, I didn't watch that, but it makes perfect sense. Uh, I mean, uh, first of all, they're sitting in a place where the Palestinians um, obviously have the the victory in the in the diplomatic sense because the West, uh, you know, is is part of the UN, um, considers it a legitimate body, a legitimate body where every country has a vote, and most countries are uh, horrible dictatorships. Yeah, um, and just to jump in, if if I'm not wrong, today or maybe soon should be the vote if uh, if uh, Palestinian authorities should enter into the UN or yeah, be officially. Yeah. Yeah, so this was the discussion, but I think that's that's a decision of the Security Council, right? So the U.S. will probably yeah. veto it. Um, but yeah, you know, he's he's he would be smirking because they're they're uh, that is their home. They have home field advantage in the U.N. because they uh, you know they're a dictatorial power, whether they're officially a state or unofficially a state as they are now. Uh, it is it is a dictatorship, uh, whether officially or unofficially. Uh, so it, it's very much at home in the UN, and Israel is very much uh, not at home in the UN any more than it is at home in the Middle East, surrounded by all these dictatorships that uh, you know that that don't face any scrutiny compared to Israel, which faces uh, most of the scrutiny of the UN. But he'd also be smirking because uh, you know they're also winning militarily. This the, these images of people on the beach. Uh, the images we're going to see uh, later on this show from Rafa, those are images of the side that got away with October 7th. Even if they lost some of their terrorists, uh, you know, even if uh, some of their homes are no longer intact, which, by the way, if you look at how they, they build, you know, that's not, it doesn't take much. Um, you know, their, their goal, remember, their goal isn't, uh, I think some people in the West uh, look at our super comfy lives and think this is the goal of everybody. And if they, if they, uh, you know, if they don't have that, then somehow, uh, you know, they're victims and they're victims of those who do have that. That is not the goal of the Palestinian people, as they clearly say. And you're, you know, really condescending to them if you don't accept what it is that they say, which is all they want to do is exterminate the Jews, get rid of the state of Israel, and then replace it with uh, some sort of dictatorship. And they disagree on what exactly sort of dictatorship that is. Uh, but yeah, the, the Palestinians are living the life, uh, and you know, and 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 it is our fault for for letting them uh, live the life after after October seventh. Yeah, and the problem with all of this is, you know, as we talked uh, earlier about it, this is rewarding Palestinians for what they did. They are not suffering any consequences of their actions. In some cases, they are actually benefiting from it. Some countries have increased their fu funding into UNRWA, uh, you know, one of the major organizations there. So the fact that they can actually benefit from this, what kind of, uh, and you know, there is a, I, I mean, even Israel has led in more humanitarian aid after October 7th than before. I mean, literally, like what, what have they suffered? Uh, and, you know, we should explain that the reason there has to be, they, they basically have to suffer, is so they can basically learn better, is so they can see that what they did on October 7 was wrong and something, and they should choose a different ideology. They should choose a better ideology. And, uh, you know, whenever we try to compare it, we often compare it to Japan uh, because, yeah, you know, Japanese people, uh, you know, attacked Pearl Harbor, but even before that attacked uh, China, committed horrible atrocities. And because of that, they were completely crushed. By the end, they were starving. Uh, and uh, from what I found out, uh, basically, they're out of like 1.7 uh, military casualties on the Japanese side, more than a million or up to a million, I think, was caused by starvation. And one of the reasons because of it uh, is this uh, operation, 
called Operation Starvation, and you cannot get more subtle uh, than that. This was an operation by the US Navy, basically focused on bombing any convoys around Japan. So basically destroying all of their supply lines. And uh, so in course of that, and that was done like towards the end of the war, like April uh, 45. And basically it is argued that because of that, uh, not only Japan was quicker to surrender, but if it happened sooner, it would have probably ended the war much sooner. Because the uh, one thing you have to realize is, uh, to a large extent, the Japanese uh, uh, farming was not mechanized. It was, they still had many tenant farmers, and all of it was focused towards war. So once you manage to completely destroy it, then the war quickly ends and the people will realize that what they've done was wrong was that done in gaza no the complete opposite was more aid is coming in more support uh, for them is coming in we see them on beaches we see them in marketplaces nothing has changed for them yeah uh thank you jeff thank you bonnie for the super chat um, you know, uh, it's it's interesting. Israel had its own uh, sort of operation starvation right after October 7th, but it was mostly rhetoric. Uh, actually, it was just it was pure rhetoric. Uh, they said that they would not allow food and, and uh, medicine into Gaza until all the hostages are released, which is a perfect uh, policy. They said to Egypt, uh, allegedly, if you send fuel trucks into Gaza, we will bomb them. Great policy. This war would have been over in days, even without having to bomb Gaza, although I think Israel should have bombed Gaza. Uh, but instead, Israel did the exact opposite and is bragging about it. It is bragging that more aid goes into Gaza now than before October 7th. What does that statement say to current and future terrorists? Uh, what is what is the release of terrorists in uh, in, you know, in those deals with Hamas? Say, what is the fact that Israel is negotiating with Hamas in the first place after saying on October 7th that this is a war that will end with the end of Hamas? Um, everything Israel is doing uh, screams defeat, and it's no surprise that Hezbollah is emboldened and continues to fire rockets daily, and uh, yesterday they caused significant damage as well. Um, uh, quite a few people were injured, and they're causing damage to property often. It's just that uh, Israelis were told to leave their homes. That's why not as many there are not as many casualties as there otherwise would have been. This is why Iran, which has has a, a forty five year policy of uh, you know wanting to wipe Israel off the map, for the first time has felt uh, you know emboldened enough to actually attack Israel militarily. Uh, the the attack on the IRGC building. Uh, a few weeks ago in, in Syria was not the first or second or tenth time that Israel has targeted uh, Iranian officials and, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in uh, definitely not in Syria alone. Um, but it is the first time that Iran responded in this matter because Israel is signaling to its enemies uh, that, that surround it and that say very clearly, we want Israel wiped off the map. Uh, we are not going to respond. We're going to talk about responding. Our rhetoric is going to be stronger than you can imagine but we will not actually act. And Israel's so-called allies, uh, first and foremost, uh, the United States of America, are saying to Israel and to Israel's allies, we will hold Israel back. And uh, and the result is, unfortunately, very, very clear. So there is one issue, you know, we've talked about uh, several times, you know, this idea of innocent Palestinians. And I've been thinking about it in the in the context of how Israel is conducting its war and uh, because you know and again uh, comparisons go to World War II there were uh, basically there were resistant movements in pretty much all countries of Axis basically trying to fight for for the Allies and uh, I think the major reason for this is the Allies have projected moral strength you know, we are fighting for the good against evil, and we will not hold back, even, even if it means that, uh, you know, those uh, few innocent people in Germany, in France, will die. Israel is not doing that. And I'm just trying to imagine, let's say there were, like, actual innocent Palestinians in Gaza, uh, obviously ignoring children who are innocent. 
let's say they were uh, innocent Palestinians. I mean, what kind of thing is like Israel projecting to them? We will not completely fight against the people, against the guilty people in your country. We will uh, try to preserve them at any point. We will let all the aid in. We will not actually try to finish this war. I mean, why would you be an Israeli, a pro-Israeli supporter in Gaza if uh, Israel is doing what it's doing? You are not going to benefit from it. Israel will not. Israel is still not actually conducting the war. Israel is not fighting for you. Who is Israel actually fighting for? It's fighting for the guilty Palestinians. It's trying to preserve them. It's not. It's not trying to protect the Israelis fully, at least. And it's not even helping the you know hypothetical innocent Palestinians. So that's what what makes it like really like horrible situation like this is really becoming like you know an endless war because of israel because israel is still not committed to fully ending the war like you've said this this war could have easily been done in days if israel actually wanted to do it thank you jeff bannister for gifting five ayn rand center uk youtube memberships you mentioned um, Rafa and that the operation doesn't seem like it's going to happen. I do have to say there is a buildup um, nowadays. You know, the, Israel is uh, is calling up reserve uh, soldiers. It does seem like they're planning to do something, whether it's a Rafa operation, whether it's something else in, in the Gaza Strip, uh, remains to be seen. There are also reports, I don't know how uh, how serious they are, that Biden basically said will green light a Rafah operation if you don't uh, respond against Iran, which of course is uh, is, is terrible. Uh, and um, but what can you expect? Uh, that, that could be seen as something surprisingly uh, uh, lenient from Biden, considering his policy in in recent months. Do you want to play the clip of uh, of Rafa, and then we'll talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so there's no starving, there's no famine, there's plenty of food, and that's what's wrong with this uh, with this picture. That's what's wrong. Again, remember these these are the people uh, because of whom October seventh happened, and who you know I'm sure some of those participated in it. Um, these are not people who should be living a good life until they are made to pay for what happened on October seventh until the hostages are released and until a new situation uh, is is created in Gaza where they can't go back to what it was uh, before October 7th, where, they, you know, their, their whole culture was built around the murder of Jews. And again, this is another image, uh, another video that shows Israel's failure in this war. Thank you, Jonathan, for the super chat. Daniel. Yeah, just to maybe continue a bit on the idea of innocent Palestinians, because we, from time to time, we hear stories, you know, uh, this guy has spoken against Hamas, uh, this journalist is speaking out against Hamas, uh, you know, criticizing Hamas, uh, saying that, uh, you know, without Hamas, we would have been better. Yet they are not doing anything about it. Nothing, you don't see any uh Gazans actually doing anything about Hamas whenever you hear story and we had one story about one uh I think former Gazan who actually lives in Israel proper that basically warned an idea of soldiers about Hamas uh, incoming attack but even he he was actually someone who was living in Israel and not in Gaza so yeah maybe we hear stories from time to time about you know people speaking out against Hamas but a Paul's still suggest they largely support Hamas and we don't see any actions actually coming against Hamas and to large extent it is because nothing bad is happening to them they still uh, uh, you know they still get uh, humanitarian aid uh, nothing that horrible is really happening to them you know from time to time IDF manages to kill uh, a Hamas official, so the prices go a bit lower because the uh, Hamas uh, uh, cannot do price controls for a little bit. So, but yeah, 
if we ever hope, uh, because one thing you have to realize is ending this war is not all that is needed. Even if you, because Israel used to occupy Gaza, even if you actually, even if Israel actually manages to go into Rafah, uh, go into uh, Deir al Bala and occupy all of Gaza, that's just half of the thing you have to do. You have to also do the occupation right. And if this is the way you're waging the war, I'm skeptical about the actual occupation because you have to show your presence. You have to show you're here and you're not leaving until they change. But if you're conducting the war this way, I, I feel like we are in for, even if uh, let's say the occupation happens, I think we're just in for another 30 years of the mild occupation with another intifada probably. Um, thank you, Enric. Thank you, Chris Cross. I'm guessing that's how you want that pronounced. Uh, did I thank Jonathan? I can thank Jonathan again. Thank you, Jonathan, for the super chat. Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, the 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 thing in Rafa that we uh, spoke about about a month ago. Israel killed um, in an airstrike some of the leaders of the uh, Hamas emergency committee in Rafa. And then prices in the market drop and Palestinians were reporting this. Now you see, uh, you know, Palestinians, you see the things that Palestinians report in mainstream media when it fits the narrative that mainstream media wants to uh, tell you so that you you get the right opinion on this uh, as the mainstream media sees it. So you'll see, uh, you know, ruins of buildings. You'll see, uh, you know, people saying they're starving. You'll see, you know, um, what we are supposed to believe is dead bodies, which in some cases might be dead bodies. Uh, you don't see the reports about, hang on a second, Israel killed some bad guys, and then the situation became a little bit better in some in some respect, which is what is always what happens in war. You know, war happens because at least on one side, bad people want to do bad things. If they are no longer alive, they are no longer able to do bad things. It's not... A complicated thing and what i think uh you know the reason we are struggling with it so much is uh because you know the, the moral um starting point the moral foundations from which many in the west uh judge issues like this is very much uh just just wrong and uh and it has to be wrong for you to end up supporting uh the palestinians Yeah, so I don't think I have much else to say about this. Uh, I mean, maybe just to summarize everything. If we ever hope to actually, you know, I mean, honestly, civilize Gazans. That's what it is. Because the acts of on October 7th were barbaric. And the fact that the Palestinian people still supported that act and uh and celebrated it proves that yeah they are savages and the only way to actually change that is militarily and strongly really show them that yeah this is not the way you cannot you know you cannot change them by dropping aid on them unless okay okay i'm not gonna make that joke uh well, um I, I do want to say, first of all, uh, Jeanette uh, points out in the in the chat, Hamas are selling food in the marketplace to Gazans. Yeah, that is that uh, aid food, aid food in the marketplace. That, that's a very important point uh, because the aid that goes in and eventually gets to Palestinians helps fund Hamas, even if it it does go to uh, people who are not Hamas. It is it it funds it you know it funds Hamas in the areas that Israel hasn't acted militarily in yet. So in a place where Israel is actually in control and Israel makes sure the aid gets to, to people, again, that is not something I, I support, but it's still very different from a place like Rafa when it is uh, fully controlled by Hamas and the aid you are sending makes sure Hamas can continue, uh, continue fighting. Make no mistake about it. The first people to eat are the people 
who uh, hold guns or who fire rockets and who can kill. Uh, it's it's most important for Hamas to feed them. Then Palestinians will be fed if uh, if that helps Hamas's goals, or they would be starved if that helps Hamas's goals, which it obviously often does because it's it's something that uh, can then be repeated in Western media as Israel is starving Palestinians. So uh, unfortunately, everything Israel does and everything the world demands of Israel to do is um, you know uh, making this war. Uh, and unfortunately, a, a failing effort and one that um, is is not going in a positive direction. I also want to say I'm very worried about what this Rafa operation will look like. Months of uh, telling the terrorists there that this is coming means they have months to prepare. They were undoubtedly prepared before. Uh, hundreds of Israeli soldiers have already died since October 7th. I don't know, uh, you know, how how bad it's going to be, but. Remember that hundreds of soldiers who died died when Israel um, was a little bit less keen to follow the slightly less uh, serious pressure that was put on it by its allies. Now the pressure is stronger. Israel is capitulating on on every front, and uh, real capitulation in this in in the diplomatic sense means real lives of soldiers being put even more at risk than they already are in uh, in every uh, part of this operation. So I have a great concern about this. I I think even if some of the military targets are going to be achieved, they're going to come at a very high price. And again, a price that should not be paid at all. This war can be won from the air, and then you send soldiers in to, to clear whatever needs to be cleared. Uh, that is how wars have been won historically. They are not won by doing as little as you possibly can. They are done by doing as much as you possibly can with as few uh, casualties to your side as possible. Um, so if Israel wants to win, it really needs to piss off its allies big time when it does something in Rafa. Uh, yeah, I think I would only add with uh, the thing about foreign aid is whenever there is foreign aid going into a country, it's always helping the whatever ruling authority there is if it's African dictators or in this case Hamas. Either it's helping them directly because you're giving them directly aid or they are seizing the aid or even if you manage to give that aid directly to its citizens uh, that's that much less uh, resources the governments have to spend on their own citizens and can use them instead of whatever authoritarian regimes uh, in this case want to spend it on. And in this case, when it comes to Gaza, it is on killing Jews. Pretty much any dollar or foreign aid Hamas uh, can get their hands on is fueling the war against the Jews. Yeah, and what's fueling uh, the West's unfortunate uh, indecision on this and, and lack of support for Israel is some very bad philosophical premises on uh, that that are that you can see across the political spectrum but mostly at the further ends if you would call them that of both the left and the right and that is going to be the topic of the reality show uh which follows this show in uh, in just a couple of minutes thanks everybody for watching thanks daniel we'll see you in a couple of minutes casa